Questions for White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield, who joins us now. Kate, good morning. It's good to see you. So if you can walk Hi, us morning. through the events of yesterday where the bipartisan framework was agreed upon. The president walked outside the West Wing there to that bank of microphones, uh, celebrated that. He turned to Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, gave him a pat on the back, kind of said, we did it, and then went inside and said, but I'm going to veto that deal I just talked about if we also don't get this reconciliation package we're looking for. So how does that play out as we go forward? Well, first of all, Willie, I'm happy to be joining you from the North Lawn of the White House, where after many years of empty talk, it is actually Infrastructure Week. Uh, obviously, as you said, the president yesterday came out with a group of bipartisan senators, five Republicans, five Democrats, and talked about a historic deal that they've been able to strike, a negotiation, a compromise to move things forward. It's a, it's a historic package that invests in rail, it invests in bridges, it invests in roads, broadband. These are things that are going to to create jobs, good, good paying union jobs, and help us compete with China. So let's not lose sight of the fact that this is an incredibly historic uh, advancement. It's exactly what people elected President Biden to do, uh, to come together, to forge consensus, to move forward. Now, you're absolutely right. We, he is going to move forward on two tracks. He's going to work together with Republicans on the places we can agree on things like infrastructure that uh, they were able to strike a deal on yesterday. He's also going to move forward on other other huge priorities that he thinks are critical for our economy. That includes the child tax credit. That includes universal pre-K. That includes child care. Those are things he's going to move forward in his American Families Plan. He said from the outset that he's going to move forward on two tracks. He's going to work to get this done. These are investments that the American people want to see us make. So, Kate, he made clear yesterday that he's not going to sign this bipartisan deal if he doesn't get the reconciliation as well. That assumes that he'll get the reconciliation, that he will have the 50 votes he needs to do that with Joe Manchin and Senator Kirsten Sinema as well. Is he confident that those senators and others who may be on the fence will join him for that reconciliation that he wants to sign? Well, of course, there's tremendous work still to do here. You saw the president say that yesterday, uh, just striking this deal yesterday, of course, a historic moment. Uh, but there's more work to be done. He's going to continue to work with Republicans and Democrats to advance these priorities. These are critical investments that are going to make a huge difference to families all across this country. And we believe it's in everybody's interest. It's in Republicans' interest. It's in Democrats' interest to vote for uh, for these investments. These are things that you know, the American people sent their elected leaders to Washington to get done, something that President Biden's going to fight for, and he's going to work very closely with uh, with Republicans and Democrats to advance this forward. I think, you know, frankly, I think he has always been doubted. I think uh, there's a lot, has always been skepticism about whether he was going to be able to do exactly what he did yesterday, which was deliver on a campaign promise to bring people together, to find common ground, and to move things forward. He did that yesterday. He's going to continue to to do it as we as we move forward in this process. Hey, Kate. Good morning, John Salamir. Good to see you. Uh, Hi, John. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to take Willie's question and spin it the other way. Uh, we certainly know that some of the moderate senators, uh, Manchin and Cinema, we keep talking about, have, have yesterday did say in their public comments they would support moving forward in reconciliation, but sort of tempered how much they'd be willing to go for. There's some talk maybe about two trillion rather than the perhaps four trillion that would be needed to have all the the components that were left out of this bill be part of the next. Bernie Sanders, meanwhile says he wants something up like six trillion. A, that's a big gap, but I'm not a mathematician. So how do you do that? How do you keep the progressives, how do you keep the more liberal senators happy if you're also trying to keep, make sure those moderates vote for it at all? Well, President Biden laid out $4 trillion in spending in his budget proposal, and that includes the American Families Plan. So he's laid out a path to get to the investments in child care, as I was talking about, in universal pre-K, in the child tax credit. He's laid out a commitment, $4 trillion pathway, to get to those investments. So he's going to continue to advocate for that. He's going to continue to push for the American Families Plan. Of course, this is a process. It's a negotiation. The reconciliation process is also a negotiation. So there's a lot of work to be done. But ultimately, these are investments that are going to make a huge difference to American families. They're going to make it easier, particularly for women, to get back into the world workforce, and they're going to grow our economy over the long haul. They're going to create job growth 
and it's going to make us better able to compete with China and other adversaries around the world. So this is these are smart economic investments. President Biden's going to continue to make that case. And we're going to let the process work out. I think, again, we saw yesterday that while people may doubt whether President Biden can get to the finish line, he's shown time and again that he can. And this is something he's very committed to and is going to continue to push forward. Jake Sherman. Hi, Kate. Just a Hi. quick logistical question. Do you, when you guys say that he's not going to sign the infrastructure piece without the second piece, does that mean without the second piece moving? Does he want to sign those at the same time? I know it's a very insider question, but I mean, it's very critically important to this process as we're at the first step here. Well, he's said from the outset that he wants these two packages to move together, to move in tandem. That, you know, that we're, as I said, that we're going to work with Republicans on places where we can find common ground. And that includes things like the infrastructure investment in roads, in bridges, and by the way, in climate. Let's not lose sight of the fact that there are uh, really important pieces in the, in the deal that was announced yesterday that include uh, resilience. So making bridges and roads more durable in the face of storms and, and, uh, and fires and droughts. So they're really important climate pieces in this bill, too. Uh, but he wants these things to move in tandem. That means that he's going to push the, the bipartisan package forward. And he's also going to simultaneously work with Congress to advance his human infrastructure priorities in the American Families Plan through the reconciliation process. So I think what he said yesterday um, uh, is what he said from the outset, which is that these two things need to move together. All right, White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield, thank you very much for being on this morning.